<laughs> Hi, I'm Hi. Nicole Alvarez, Sam Cooper of Mount Joy. Hello, Nicole. We go way back, so pretending that this is like a formal <laughs> affair. Yeah, we are not meeting each other. Yeah. We're not meeting each other for the first time. No. We were having inappropriate conversations before this. Slightly, sure. Not inappropriate, but you know, yeah. Wait, things that maybe mean? we don't, like we, we shouldn't talk about what we were talking about to the masses yet, right? Yet. Let's, you know. The ceremony let's thing. Let's tease it a little bit, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. Let's talk about the band first. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk to you about. And I'm going to start. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of your band, as you know. I've been to many of the shows. Yeah. How would you describe Mount Joy to somebody who hasn't heard Mount Joy? Oh, man, that's a really good question. Yeah, people always are like, what? Like, how would you describe your music? Because I've heard folky. I've heard jam band. I've heard this or that. And I don't think any of it is accurate because there's so, so many more elements involved in Mount Joy. So I wanted to hear it from you. Yeah, I think um, I think we go from that folk rock indie thing into psychedelia into jam band world, um, but I think that's just a product of our of the players in our band, and we all come from different backgrounds. Um, you know, Jackie, our keyboard player, is, is classically trained. Maybe She's the best, badass, by the maybe way. Maybe the best piano player I've ever seen in my life in person. Yeah. Not maybe that's that that she absolutely is, and then. Um, yeah, Michael and Sotir, more of this rock world. Matt and I come from this kind of jam band, you know, 60s, 70s, dead, Rolling Stones, Beatles um, kind of thing. And when you put all those things together in this big old melting pot, um, yeah, I think we're just like greater than the sum of our parts. How would you describe the Mount Joy fan base? They're great. Yeah, right? Yeah, I think, I think it nice started... Nice looking crowd, too. Beautiful people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, I think it's... Um, I don't know. I, I think it's an if you know, you know kind of a thing. At least that's how it started of like Mount Joy, I think was this thing where, you know, you're on a road trip and your friend would play a song. And that hopefully, you know, was Mount Joy. <laughs> and then they would tell two people and they would tell two people. And so it always, you know, we always get messages, really sweet messages and crazy messages. But the sweet ones are always, you know, uh, I first heard Astrovan on a road trip to Denver with my girlfriend or best friend, whatever it is. Um, or I first heard Silver Lining. It means X to me. Um, because of this memory that it, it brings up, um, so yeah, I think there I think there's a beautiful quality to that to not being a band that's jammed down people's throats that is just kind of this. It's organic. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, that's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to hear music, I think. What would you say is the thing that first put Mount Joy on the map? Whatever map, it, <laughs> you know, people say the map, whatever. The but map. what was the thing that that happened to you guys that you realized? Okay. Yeah, I, um, uh, it was the song Astrovan mm -hmm. was um, in 2016. We put it on Spotify just for the hell of it, just to kind of, you know, I mean, we believed in the music, but I'm not sure what we expected to happen. Um, and it got on this playlist called, I believe it's called Hanging Out and Relaxing. Yeah, that and sounds I, like it belongs there. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice song to hang out and relax to. But I think what happened is there's, a, there's an algorithm where... You know, if, if it, Spotify can track, you know, how long people listen to songs and, and um, whether they skip it or not. And, and so it's kind of creepy if you think about it's, it. They know it's everything. Very creepy. They know everything. They do. Yeah. Um, but God bless Spotify. Yep. And I guess what happened with that particular song is that people enjoyed it so much that it just it kept going higher and higher to the top of the playlist, which had like you know, 1.3 million followers or something so it became right. like a mega al algorithm is what you're saying mega algorithm yeah. but but not but again in this weirdly organic way where people actually like the song it's mm -hmm. not like people you know it's not like spotify was like put it to the top it was like <laughs> just naturally went to the top of this playlist and so i think it got like a million streams in the first few weeks and then there was a moment of like oh my god this like, is happening what do we do we haven't played a show yet um we didn't even have you know uh, a drummer or a keyboard player and it was just like what do we do um and yeah we just went for it and but at that point did you imagine this can really happen for us or or were you just too busy trying to find other you know other players and trying to figure out how to play live or were you like did your heart start beating fast like this dream might actually happen no i think it was more of like if we don't follow through on this then we'll regret it forever okay um and that's another misconception, too, about our band, I think, sometimes, is that people think that it's just this, like, you put a song on Spotify, it blows up, and yay! No, it, it doesn't work that way. You get in a van mm -hmm. for 200 days out of the year, 
minimum. Stinky for van. Four or five years. Yeah. Stinky van. Ex- is disgusting. Yes. Before you even think about a bus and making money. I mean, like. I think they think you make money. If, if you have one song that's really popular, yeah. I think everybody. Yeah. I think a lot of people assumes make money. <laughs> a lot of people, but yeah. the actual band no. is still kind of no, no, no. cutting and pasting it together. Yes. And by it, I mean their lives. Yeah. I think that's the other thing, too, that people don't really appreciate sometimes is. Yeah, you get in a van for 200 days a year, and it's like, you have a girlfriend, you might not you after might not. that. After, yeah. I mean, you know, things like that, just relationships and life, and you go home and your parents are a little older. And um, But here we are, and here I am at K-Rock. But at that <laughs> point, like, when you make an Astro van and you realize this can actually be a thing, are you chasing the success of Astro van, or at least you guys, what... Mm-hmm. Are you just like, I can't wait to show them more songs that we have? Or are you just chasing that particular success? Because it could go either way. There are some artists that just want to continuously make the hit song. Mm-hmm. I think that's a misstep. But what was your MO? I think the MO was just to make songs that Matt and I enjoyed. I think Matt and I both moved to LA at the same time in 2015. And you know he was following a girlfriend here and I still don't to this day know why I came here. Um, but <laughs> it's just kind of new. Like I something just knew you something in. was pulling me yeah. west, Manifest Destiny. And I think just making songs that we enjoyed playing for each other or with each other to people, um, little house parties and things, just acoustic guitars and just seeing what happened. And then at one point, yeah, that was the MO. It's just making songs that we enjoyed. Don't try to make a radio song. Don't try to ever make a song that you don't yourself like crazy you'll <clears throat> and you'll never do it yeah. you'll never make it um and yeah i think that was the mo of just making songs that we enjoy and then that was when yeah our bassist michael who we found on craigslist he was like these songs are pretty craigslist good is yeah. the gift that keeps on giving i'm sure telling you does. wow i'm not sure what it's given anyone recently but i'm sure there's a friend of mine got an arm wall but that's boring it's neither no, here nor there important. i know somebody that found a, a hum another human sure. on there yeah there's a lot of people that find humans on there let's focus on mountain Joy. sure yeah. so we found michael who's a human um, <laughs> and he said these songs are good my roommate can record these and that was caleb nelson is his name um he produced some of the first songs like uh, Asher Van and Sheep, Cardinal, um, and yeah, then he re- he just produced our last record, the whole record. Before uh, we get to the new record, give yeah. me three highlights off the top of your head um, hmm. regarding being in Mount Joy, whether it's playing somewhere, whether it's looking out into the audience and seeing somebody sing something back to you, like three things that you'll never forget for the rest of your life. Oh, man. I was with you the night we met Kiefer Sutherland. God, that was good. Um, at <laughs> the Troubadour. That was, he watched your whole show. A, a, unreal. Buying people shots of whiskey. Um, I'll never forget that. Yeah, I remember I went up to him afterwards because someone was like, Kiefer Sutherland's here, and I didn't know until after. Yeah. We have a and, picture. It's on my wall at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing You mean Kiefer like, yeah. Yeah, and I walked up to him, and he's like, great show, man. He's got the coolest voice in the he world. He does. And um, I'm going to try and make this radio friendly, but um, I was like, uh, dude, if I knew you were here, I would like crap my pants. And then he looked at me and he said, "If I knew you were here, I would have crap my pants." Oh my and then God. he made some kind of sexual but friendly. Oh God, yeah, mo- movement I'm with his hands. Yeah. So glad I got to be part of that with you. Okay, yeah, give me two others. That was one. Uh, that's the, obviously the biggest. Yeah. Um, we played Red Rocks last year. God, you're perfect for Red Rocks it too. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like rained right in the middle of the show, and this beautiful, perfect. Stop. Yeah. You got rain? Yeah. Okay. It was the first it was the first show back there that wasn't like twenty five percent capacity or something. Okay. Um Oh wow. And Don, the promoter at Red Rocks, he gave this like beautiful speech um before our set and I kept trying to do this thing where I was like, I don't I just want to treat this like any other show because I was trying not to crap my pants. <laughs> you and your crap. I'm starting yeah, to think that's a problem yeah, for I you. I have an issue. Um, we'll talk later. But we will. And um, But he gave this beautiful moving speech and everyone was like crying. And then we're just like, all right, let's, let's go, go play Red this. Rocks. Like, it was insane. Um, I'll give me one more. Man. Like a band moment. Like, is there a time that maybe you looked at the rest of them on stage? I don't know. Something <laughs> that you all. Um, oh, man. A TV show. A TV show. Something in Los Angeles. Well, there was Conan. Oh, yeah. Was that cool? It was really cool. Do bands love doing that? Like the late night talk show? Yeah. Okay. It's so exciting because it's live. So it's not live live, but they they tape the show as if it's live. Yeah. Um, And so it is nerve wracking. And that was our first ever, you know, 
appearance on television. You've accomplished a lot so far, Sam. Yeah. To think you were going to be a lawyer. I was a lawyer. You were a lawyer. I was a lawyer. I remember pieces of that conversation because you and I went out one night and got very hammered, and I just remember something, something lawyer. We kept drinking. Do you remember what we were drinking? It was like the drink of the day. It was the drink of the Fat day. Fat Dog. It in was Hollywood. something. Let's talk about the new album. I'm getting I nauseous just home. thinking about it. I like. I'm I think not, I put you in an Uber. <laughs> no, I ran home. I have. I have. Uh, I have. The only thing me. I remember is like running across Venture or one of the. I, I don't, don't know, know where we were. Don't was, even know. I don't know. It was yeah, and uh, I made it. I'm I'm glad because now you're here. I'm we're here. here, and let's talk. June 17th is a big day for you because Orange Blood comes out. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what well, what sparked it, and give me a little bit about the album. So um, this album started. I think it was, it's it's a pandemic record in that, um, in order to not go crazy, Matt and I were in Philadelphia, um, and we rented out this barn in the woods outside of Philly, and we would just kind of treat it like a nine to five and go every day and just work on songs and just songs and songs and just we had I don't know how many songs and just narrowing it down to these 10 songs um why 10 I think it was just you know it's a lot okay. of songs yeah all right <laughs> um and we have a ton of songs you know we'll keep playing more live and um working on new ideas but I think we just wanted the 10 best songs um that we could come up with on one album and I think we did that and I'm I know people come in here and they're like, this is the best freaking yeah. record of all time. Not, I'm not saying it's the best record of all time, but to me, this is like the most proud of any Mount Joy record I've ever been. Um, just being honest, I like, I'm so proud that it was Caleb that produced it. Um, the same guy who did Astro Van. It was a team effort. It was this like, yeah, just working on ideas and just having the time where, you know, a lot of people go into the studio and you have four weeks. You do, do 10 songs in four weeks, and so it's a song every other day or whatever it is. For us, it was just like, no. Like, we're not going to release these songs unless they're the best 10 songs we have. It's the best. And the best recordings of the songs. Um, and I think we did that. Like, straight I can't up, I think wait. we did that. So I mean, I know I've heard. I've, yeah. I, I'm, I'm privileged to know enough. I can't wait for the songs to get out there. Is there one song that means the most to you? Whew. To me... Um, man, there's, I, I was trying to have this conversation with someone the other day of like, what's your favorite song? Um, the, the most personal, it doesn't even have to be your favorite, but one song that might be the most personal to you on the record. Yeah. It doesn't have to be your favorite, but it's just the one that for some reason it either pulls at the heartstrings or it just has something a little extra for you. I think it's Lemon Tree. It is Lemon Tree. Um, I know that's like the, the single and that's it's the It's okay. Um, but for me, that was like, that was a guitar riff that I came up with at the beginning of COVID, just sitting around with a guitar, trying not to go insane. And of just playing it and just hearing it and just being like, oh, there's something here, you know? And then bringing that to Matt. And then him just kind of, just like orchestrating the song around this riff um, in such a beautiful so way. Cool. And, and yeah, over the, the course of like two years, putting that thing together to build um, something like that with your friends and mm -hmm. these people that you work with and to watch it just grow and grow. It's gotta be the most, it's like having a child. It really is. And it then, really is. Yeah. And we, you know, we recorded that song a year and a half ago and it just wasn't right. And we were tried it again somewhere else and it just wasn't right. And then we, we recorded it this past winter and we like hit it and we were like, this is it. And we just kept playing it live, playing it live and just working on it, working on it. And it was, that was it. And it was just this beautiful moment of like, Man, just from the beginning of COVID to then to now and people hearing it and enjoying it. Um, Thank God we're on the other side of all that nonsense. I hope we are. Thank God. Yeah, no, it seems Man. like it's getting a little crazy again, but I we'll know. see. Yeah. So June 17th and June then you'll 17th. be on tour. You'll be here in L.A. in August. Is there anything you want to say to your fans who've been with you and not only been with you, but brought other people in to enjoy and helped your band grow and grow? If you could say one thing to them, yeah. what would it be? I think we appreciate you. Yeah. I think we appreciate anyone that shares music that believes in us so much that they have to show their friends yep. um, to say like, hey, this song means something. You should listen to it, too. I think that's what it's all about. I back you on that because you treat your fans very well. I'm one of them. I mean, <laughs> I'll always be a Mount Joy fan first. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sam Cooper, Mount Joy. Thanks for watching.